Six Nations 2024, folks. Week two, second game sees England hosting Wales from Twickenham. We will preview some squads, some stats, predictions, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. Sitting here in the summer in NZ with some cicadas buzzing in the background. That's one that's particularly loud. But I can feel the tension between England and Wales, even from this side of the world. There's something special about England-Wales. I don't know what it is. It's just the rivalry. I can I can taste it from here, and I'm very much looking forward to how this one is going to play out. Which Wales squad is going to show up? The one which impressed in the second half against the Scots, or the one which was kind of all at sea in the first half? England, which is an unchanged starting 15. Can they unlock some of that attacking potential which they have threatened to show? Or will they be booting the leather off the ball all day long? We'll kind of have to wait and see. If the Twickenham crowd is fully entertained or not. I mentioned England. Not much in the way of changes. Ellis Genge being back means Obano, as I remember, he was a late scratching last week. So he's back. And he's on the bench. He's got the number 17 jumper on. So Marla, George and Stewart, same front row as what we had last week. Itoje and Chisholm likewise continue on in the second row. Itoje conceded a couple of penalties early on in the game against the Italians. But then kind of found his rhythm. Won himself a turnover, very busy at the breakdown and busy with this kind of defensive tackling shifts. Roots, Underhill and Ben Earl, same back row and the back row was pretty impressive as well. Ethan Roots got man of the match in his debut, very busy, a bunch of carries, a bunch of tackles. So exactly what you want to see from the guy wearing number six. Underhill, you know he's going to hit hard. And then Ben Earl just continued some of that World Cup form, which is what I was really pleased about. Nine from nine tackles, four defenders beaten, most carries from any England player in round number one. So very, very busy shift. And um, yeah, looking the part at number eight. Alex Mitchell, George Ford continue on at nine and ten. Ford was pretty consistent from the boot uh, last week. You know, kept the scoreboard ticking over and Alex Mitchell scored a nice wee heads up try. Dingwall and Slade continue on at 12-13 as well. Uh, Dingwall, I feel like of all the guys who debuted, maybe took a little bit longer to get into the rhythm. I don't know. It's hard when you're comparing it to a guy like Ethan Roots who got man of the match in his first ever game. So Dingwall's a good player. I back him to continue on. And Slade, uh, with that boot of his, will also likely punish any Welsh uh, space which is left in the backfield. Freeman was maybe my favorite of the guys. I know he's played for England before, but um, who haven't had that many caps. Geez, he was electric. Like the England side gets criticized for not having that much kind of attacking, hitting power. Freeman had two of England's four clean breaks, which does not surprise me because he is an absolute weapon. He beat four defenders. Get that man the ball, please. Hopefully he can keep his pants on for the 80 this time because he did get them slightly pulled down in a tackle, which happens every now and again. Uh, Elliot Daly is on the other wing. I was kind of hoping to see, uh, you know, Fabio Bosso get a start, but it was probably unlikely given the the, the nature of the, the the pressure of this game, especially seeing as he's got Welsh background. And then uh, Freddie Stewart is there at 15 as well. Um, will he be chasing high balls or will England not? kind of kick to the wings like they did last week we'll have to wait and see dan genge and goal cole uh that's the front row replacement so as i mentioned genge has recovered from his injury dan still didn't get as many minutes as i would like but george is the captain george was the top tackler with 10 so yeah maybe we'll let the captain do his thing and and mark over here in new zealand will keep quiet coles and culling himself are the uh other two forward replacements, Danny Kerr, Finn Smith, and Fable Bussell, like I mentioned, are the back replacements. So yeah, not a lot of talking points in terms of changes. Marcus Smith is still recovering. Uh, George Martin, I think they said, is in camp, so he'll be on the radar sooner rather than later. But yeah, she's pretty steady as she goes for the England side. Um, I'm excited to see how some of these guys go in week two. Cam Roots keep up that same performance level. Uh, will Freeman be equally as, as, as dangerous as he was? Will Dingwall get a little bit more ball in hand time? Uh, make a couple more tackles? We'll kind of have to wait and see. Uh, Wales, like I mentioned, it's, it's really, really Jekyll and Hyde performance last week. Nothing re went right for them early, but uh, yeah, Gats has, has tinkered. He's certainly tinkered. Gareth Thomas is back fit, so he's on there at loose head prop. Elliot D, whose line out went a lot better than Ryan Elias's, swaps places with the starting guy from last week and Kieran Aserati. Uh, likewise gets a start this week after being on the bench. Duffith Jenkins continues to captain the side 
from the second row and he made 17 out of 17 tackles which is a captain's knock if ever you've seen one Adam Baird continues on alongside him so a bit of experience alongside the young captain Alex Mann who was mightily impressive from the bench last week managed to get himself on the board he is uh he is there at number six replaces James Botham who's out with a knee injury unfortunately Tommy Raffle Tommy turnover is what has been being called three turnovers from him last week Top the Six Nations in that regard. So he's at number seven. And Wainwright was barnstorming with ball in hand at number eight. He managed 65 meters and beat five defenders, beaten from 11 carries. Those are the kind of numbers you more expect from Aldrich. But Wainwright was doing it. Managed man of the match in a losing shift. Thomas Williams starts this week at nine alongside Yoan Lloyd. Uh, Costello is out with concussion, unfortunately. So that's an enforced change. Uh, Tompkins and George North are the 12-13 combo this week. Tompkins, I thought was pretty decent. He's one of my kind of underrated players of World Rugby and um, helped set up a try. Made a bunch of carries, so a couple of offloads. Look forward to see more of him. He's played alongside George North a fair bit before. Remember, North was uh, injury scratching last week, so he is there at 13. Adams and Dyer are the wings, and they were both pretty good. Adams, barring that dumb... Throwing the ball into touch, which conceded a penalty, was sharp. And Dyer was was really, really sharp. Ball in hand, five defenders, beaten three clean breaks. Uh, yeah, very, very good. I think Adams had um, 14, was it 14 carries? He was real busy anyway. So the Welsh back three was dangerous. And then the guy who was on debut but didn't really get talked about, Cameron Wynette, just quietly had 15 carries for 122 metres at fullback. So not a bad, not a bad number. I think he had the most run metres of anybody last week. So... Well done, young man. Uh, Bench-wise, Elias Domachowski and Archie Griffin. Archie Griffin will be getting his debut if he comes on. Will Rollins is back after missing game one with some family duties to attend. Tane Basham is back in uh, to the 23 with both of them, as I said, injured. Kieran Hardy is also into the 23. Kai Evans into the 23. And Mason Grady continues on. So a lot more changes. Is it wholesale? Maybe not quite, but it's a lot of changes. From, from Gats compared to a very stable England side. I like stability. I feel like a couple of changes is, is good for, for keeping things fresh and replacing injuries and whatnot, but wholesale changes can be disruptive. We'll see. Gats didn't have a choice in some of those places. Um, Stats-wise for the sides, Wales, like their, their position and territory uh, in the second half was, uh, was greatly increased compared to the, the first half where they really struggled against the Scots, but the second half was great. The first half lineup was was just genuinely awful. They couldn't catch a cold, but it went really well in the second half. They only conceded four points against, uh, sorry, four points, four penalties uh, against the Scots. So the majority of them at the, the start of the game, I think all of them at the start of the game, if they can keep themselves to four penalties conceded, they'll go all right at Twickenham. Scored a couple of more tries, so they might be looking to go that area against England as well. Um, yeah, I hope second half Wales shows up because first half Wales was genuinely a tough watch. Uh, England had the fewest clean breaks of the Six Nations team last week with four. And them and France only scored two tries. So England's attack still was unproven. But I mean, Borthwick, you know, he said it's a promising start. That's why he's kept things stable because, you know, he's got a bunch of new guys in. So it's maybe a bit too much to expect them to just, just be world beaters from week number one so territory stats were still great kicking from hand stats were still great even if they conceded a couple of tries off the kick return they'll have learned some lessons there but yeah uh borthwick's gonna play borthwick's game if you get the wins that's the main thing recent history between the sides is fitting that it's pretty tight uh england three wales two from the last five there's been a couple of big score lines there um wales won 20 points to 19 couple of years ago was it uh no it was august 2023 and then um you know 40 points to 24 back in 2021 uh england won by 10 points in 2023 so england's won in cardiff wales haven't won in twickenham in the last five the last two twickenham games have been uh english wins although 23 19 uh in 2022 and 19 17 in 2023 so yeah it's pretty tight average score across the last five is 21 19 to wales so there's not a lot between the teams uh bookies have got england winning this one by 11 so pretty comfortably actually and the rugby forecast algorithm saying england by nine so despite the close games 
in their history of recent times. England are predicted to get this one with their stable squad by more than a score. Anyway, not predicted to go down to the wire. It is on a Twickenham Saturday afternoon game, 4.45 long kickoff, which is 5.45 for those of us in New Zealand, which is not the most horrendous kickoff time you've ever heard of, but still pretty much getting up with the sun. James Dolman, with that New Zealand connection, is the ref for this one, fingers crossed. We can keep 15 guys on each of the teams for the majority of the games. And uh, we're not talking too much about the ref come the end of the game. If you want England rugby gear, check out England Rugby Store down in the description. They're an affiliate of the channel. Always items on sale. New gear, some old gear. Get yourself some gear. I am a man who genuinely likes some rugby gear. But yeah, England Wales. You guys let us know. Number five in the world, England. Number rank eight. Number rank? No, rank eight Wales. How are they going to go? You guys let us know your thoughts. And um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.